Okay, excellent. So it looks like we've got the majority of people signed in and attending, ready to start this webinar. So welcome to another episode of Creditor Watch webinars. Today we're going to be talking about 10 tips on managing debtors. So we're, we're looking at a bit of a best credit practices series. My name's Patrick Coughlin. Anyone who's uh, signed into a webinar before, I'm, I'm the, the general presenter. I'm also the commercial director at Creditor Watch. Um, so I'm across everything from sales and marketing to, to product development and strategy as well. Feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. Uh, reach out if you've got any questions. So just a few things before we get started, some housekeeping. Uh, you'll notice in the GoToWebinar um, little console that pops up, that you're able to ask questions. So please feel free to ask questions along the way as we're going. We've got some very helpful Creditor Watch staff, customer service reps who are listening in and monitoring that. Um, so they'll answer any questions you might have as we go. If there are any sort of tricky ones that require a phone call or a longer email type response, uh, we'll get back to you in the next sort of 12 to 24 hours or so. Um, majority of the time we can answer most questions as we're going or you know just after the uh, with the webinar itself in terms of the slides and um, this this webinar itself we're recording it so we'll provide a record um, a link to YouTube for the recording and also PDF of the slides as well so you can share that with um, any colleagues that you have um, or if you have to leave us midway through uh, you can catch up at another time so a quick look at the agenda um, I'll talk a little bit about Creditor Watch. I think the majority of people who are signed up today are Creditor Watch customers, so I'll just touch on that a little bit. Um, we'll have a look, look at a little bit of market insights. Uh, we've got a few infographics, so one in particular that I want to show you. We'll look at and ask, I guess, how well you know your actual customers. So we'll do that you know, via a poll and also as, one, as part of one of those infographics. Um, and then we'll get into, obviously, the, the top 10 tips. For managing debtors now um, I've got a confession to make there's probably more than 10 tips out there but we're trying to uh, to keep it fairly easy for you to follow um, and obviously you know that there's a few more things out there that you could be doing but I think you know these 10 tips that we that we run through are fairly uh, fairly consistent with the way creditor watch operates in terms of you know ensuring you know exactly who you're dealing with um, having protocols in place and also following those and always q a if there's any specific questions that i can try to answer at the end i'll do that as well so a little bit about creditor watch we're australia's leading commercial credit reporting bureau with a, with over fifty thousand customers so if you're on our database you would have received a, a video that we sent out um, i believe it was last month if not jump onto our linkedin facebook twitter um, or even our website you can have a look at that video where we've come in just over six years, I believe it is. So we provide a wide range of products and we'll touch on a few of them very briefly today. You know, today's more about learning what you should be doing rather than what you should be using at Creditor Watch. Uh, but those products include credit reports, monitoring and alerts on your customers so you can find out when they get into, you know, financial difficulty elsewhere and also debt collection tools. We'll also provide things like an online credit application that allows your customers to apply for an account with you online, um, basically replacing, replicating your paper-based credit application. And we've got some data washing, data fulfillment tools as well, which coming to the end of the financial year is, uh, is definitely something that um, a lot of our customers engage us for. Um, they want to make sure that their database is up to date as possible. It's a good time to look at their database and go, okay, well, we should probably be stop. We should probably stop doing business with these customers that are in administration or deregistered, um, and also just to do a an annual review on their customer base altogether. So for smaller businesses, we're a virtual accounts receivable manager through and through. A lot of people don't have the ability to have a dedicated credit manager or credit management team. So Creditor Watch definitely helps fill that gap, uh, particularly if you start to integrate with Xero and MYOV as well. Provide a, a lot of additional features when you do um, integrate with your accounting platform. 
Um, we're affordable for all businesses, so from sole traders through to public companies. We've got plenty of public companies using us. And we're pulling data from plenty of sources, including ASIC, ATO, courts around Australia, debt collectors, and obviously our Creditor Watch customers. So let's jump into a quick poll. Do you have a documented or set routine for collecting debt? I've given you a, obviously the yes, no, and sort of. So if you're feeling honest and you think, you know what, it's not documented, it's not quite set, but I do remain fairly consistent in how I do it, um, obviously jump in and, and select that sort of. Hopefully by the end of this, we can move you into that yes category. All right, give it another second or so, and then we'll close up the poll and have a look at the results. All right, so that's great. We've got 67% of you do have a documented or set routine for collecting debt, which is fantastic. Um, it's really important, as you'll see through this webinar, that you do follow you know, a, a nice routine there. Um, only 6% of you don't, which is, which is you know, really, uh, it's quite surprising to be honest. It's, it's, really, it's really impressive that so many people do have some sort of um, routine in place. And thank you to those obviously who are being very honest and saying, you know what, I could probably do a little bit better than I, uh, than I currently am. So a few market insights. Um, again, Credit Watch runs a quarterly um, small business risk review that provides insights into the number of defaults that are being registered, court actions, ASIC insolvencies, etc. So I've just pulled a slide from our Q1 um, small business risk review showing you that there has been a steady increase. So there was a big increase obviously in Q3 last year, but there's a, a continuing increase of payment defaults when we compare quarter to quarter, year on year. Um, so something that we all have to be aware of. And I think it's important to point out that defaults, particularly these are all registered with Creditor Watch. Defaults registered with Creditor Watch tend to turn into court actions, or at least there's a, there's a trend that follows them. They turn into court actions within six to 12 months. So if you are monitoring your customers, you receive a default alert on one of your customers, um, you know, it's something to definitely take quite seriously, regardless of the size of the debt, because it is typically an early warning that they're in a spot of bother. Um, I've put in a link here to see all the other results. So please feel free to obviously click on that when you get a chance and go through to the Credit Watch website. Something else I want you to think about is what we call a bad debts journey. So we're looking at how a, a, an invoice, essentially a sale, turns into you know a bad debt and potentially even a winding up administration. So you've got your outstanding invoice. It's then overdue. Hopefully you're registering a payment default if you're a Creditor Watch customer. Um, you would then likely refer that on to a debt collector if it was sizable enough, or go to court yourself wind up the company and the company that goes into administration. So that's the sort of typical, very standard journey of a bad debt. So I want you to sort of think about that as we run through our tips today. So something that our, um, our clever marketing and PR team came up with recently was what they called the cash flow train. Um, we created an infographic out of it. And essentially there are five types of customers that we've identified. The long time rider, the sleeper, the perfect passenger, the vague wanderer, and the evader. So again, clicking through to the infographic itself, um, I'll just scroll past this very quickly to have a look at it. But essentially, what we're doing is categorizing the main types of customers that you have out there, giving you a little bit of information on how you should be dealing with them. Um, and you know what they what they can potentially do to your business. Obviously, that the evader is the one that we all want to be either avoiding or identifying early, so that they don't actually affect our business too much.
So another quick poll, has a sleeper or a evader impacted your cash flow before? So let's have a look at what they are. So we've got the evader, whether they simply refuse to pay or just disappear completely. Evaders go from business to business, leaving a trail of debt in their wake. Though mercantile agents in legal action can help recover some of the amount owed, reporting bad debtors will warn other businesses of their failure to pay their bills. And the sleeper is just as sleeping passengers are known to miss their stop slow and late payers fail to meet their payment deadline. Whilst forgetting to pay an invoice can sometimes be a genuine oversight, many sleepers need a friendly nudge to remind them of their, oblig of their obligations in meeting their credit terms. So I'm just going to jump onto the poll section. Has a sleeper and or evader impacted your cash flow before? Um, it seems fairly simple and you know, I'd, I'd suggest that it's going to be a high yes rate, uh, but it just gets you thinking about the types of customers that you have. And while having a set routine can work for you know, almost 100% of your customers, sometimes you need to tailor it slightly differently when dealing with different customers. <coughs> Excuse me. Obviously, you've got your perfect sort of customers out there, your long-time riders, the perfect passenger as we're showing there, um, but we do have those other ones that do struggle. So yeah, as, as I expected, plenty of you obviously deal with um, sleepers or evaders. And look, at the end of the day, we can't avoid them altogether, but hopefully by putting in some additional practices, we can start to limit what sort of effect they have on the business. So let's look at the, the 10 tips for managing debtors that we've put together. Be consistent, due diligence, communicate your credit policy, invoice immediately and correctly, monitor your customers, establish protocol for prompt payment, utilize technology, report bad debtors, get expert help. And the last one, which I think is very nicely aligned with the first one, repeat, repeat, repeat. So let's have a look at them in a little bit more detail. So be consistent. The majority of you told us that you've got a documented routine or a semi-documented routine. So once you have that, it's really important to stick to it uh, because we know that if you do miss something or you forget something along the way, that can be the time that a debtor stops paying you, slips past you, you know, you miss the warning signs that they're slowing down their payments, et cetera. Um, and all of a sudden you've got your, a, you know, a, a slow payer on your hands or a bad debtor or someone that just disappears altogether. So that's the, the first thing you should be doing. When you're taking on a new customer, due diligence is incredibly important. Okay. And due diligence, when I say that, it means, you know, who are you dealing with? You should be collecting as much information about them as possible. ABN, business name, um, addresses, who are the directors? And then having a look a little bit more in depth at, at, at that company or that business itself. In this case, do they have a good credit history? Um, you know, are there are there cross directorships that we need to be aware of that could be you know worrying? So if we jump over here into Creditor Watch. Anyone who's a Creditor Watch customer will know what I'm doing right here. So I'm searching for a business. So in this case, I'm looking at a company called Denim Constructions. They've just come to me. They want a credit limit. They want a credit account with us. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to do a little bit of due diligence. And straight away, I can see that this is not the type of customer that I want to deal with. They're under external administration. They've got lots of adverse information. So payment defaults, court actions, insolvency notices, mercantile inquiries, etc. So I know straight away that this isn't the sort of company I want to deal with. If they were clean, they had a nice, you know, no sort of adverse information up the top there, we can start to get a little bit more information, you know, verify their ABN, their entity type, um, even start to scroll down and have a look at who are their directors. Okay, I can see who their directors are. Um, in this case, he's got a number of failed or failing companies that he's a director of as well. So a credit report really helps fill that due diligence hole to give you a little bit more confidence that you know exactly who they are and what they're doing. If you were to see court judgments, you can see the information there. 
payment defaults are obviously registered by our customers as well. Okay, so that's a that's a credit report, and that's what you really should be running on every new customer that you're bringing on, um, and obviously doing reviews along the way as well. Next one is communi communicate your credit policy. Look, you probably don't have to communicate it as loudly as this lady is here, but it's definitely something you want to do up front. So before you do provide goods and services, make sure the client knows what your credit policies are. What are your payment terms? What are your collection stages? When will you escalate to a debt collector, for instance? How do you manage dispute? Um, do you charge interest on your um, on overdue debts, for instance? Um, a lot of times you can put in, to, in your terms and conditions um, that they will be responsible for paying not only the outstanding debt, but if you engage a lawyer or a debt collector, they'll have to cover their fees as well on top. So having all of this up front makes it very easy down the track, should everything go a little bit pear-shaped, to ensure that you've... Um, protected yourself as best as possible, and you don't end up out of pocket. The next step, and it seems simple, but we see it over and over again with plenty of our customers and, and people that we speak to out in, the, uh, out in the world there, invoice immediately and correctly, okay? So send that invoice the day of or the day before or as soon as you can once you've provided those goods and services. Ultimately, the longer that you wait to invoice, it's the longer that you wait to get paid. Now, they could be a good payer, but everyone knows that if you can get paid a couple of days quicker, it's fantastic for your cash flow. So get that invoice out as soon as possible and ensure that it's correct. So again, based on your discussion with that new customer, with that debtor, and also looking at the credit report, you want to note on there, who are you sending it to? Who is their who is their, what is their business name? What's their ABN? What's their address? Who is the AP contact? Who do I make it out to? That sort of thing. You want your details on there, including who you are and also how they can pay you and clearly state the amounts, obviously, and the payment terms as well. When is that, when is that debt due? All of these things seem really simple, but getting those simple things right is going to ensure that you get paid um, hopefully on time or a lot quicker than you know anyone else who's also invoicing and not um, putting all those details on. Now, one little thing with a, as a Creditor Watch customer, you can obviously add the Creditor Watch membership logo, which looks pretty much exactly like this, um, to your invoices and statements. And again, that's going to push your probably push your invoice to the top of the pile. So when they look at a bunch of invoices, they see that Creditor Watch logo, they know, okay, well, these guys take their debt seriously. Let's get these ones sorted as soon as possible. The next one is monitoring all your customers. And again, this is really a Creditor Watch tool that you should be using if you're a customer. If not, obviously sign up and have a trial of it. But ultimately, when people ask me about, you know, what's the benefit of monitoring your customers, I say, whether you've got, you know, two, or 2,000 or 20,000 customers, how do you know what they're doing elsewhere? How do you know that they're paying their other suppliers properly or on time or at all? How do you know that they haven't gone into administration? How do you know that they haven't been taken to court or there's a new um, director or shareholders, they've sold the business, et cetera? It's impossible, or it's virtually impossible to monitor all the same data sources that we do without utilizing some form of technology, in this case, Creditor Watch monitoring. So it's really simple to set up and you get a nice email letting you know when something has changed or when something has gone wrong. Establish protocol. Actually, sorry, let me just come back to that. For those of you who haven't used Creditor Watch before, you'll see here, this is what a risk alert email looks like. So. We can see here that two companies have had ASIC insolvency notices lodged against them. One has had a payment default and one's had a court judgment and it comes through on a daily basis and it's as simple as clicking on the link, takes you through to that particular company and that's going to show you the credit report of that company. We have a look at the commercial payment default, it's the same thing. So it's going to take you through to that particular credit report and you can see a little bit more information about them. So we can see that there's been a couple of defaults registered and also a court action as well.
So next one, we've got number six, establish protocol for prompt payment. So the majority of you, as we found out, have got some sort of routine set in place. Now, it, 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 there's no harm in documenting that just so you don't forget it. Front of mind means you're always going to be following it. So certain things, particularly at this stage, we've brought the customer on board, we've invoiced them, we've probably sent out the goods or you know provided the services, but they haven't yet paid. So what's what, what are we doing? What's our what's our process in terms of reminding them how much they owe and when it's due? So in this case, when are you going to send an, a reminder email or a letter of demand um, or potentially even register a default? It's nice to have that documented. For example. On the due date, I'm going to send them an email. A couple of days after that, I'll send them a reminder letter. And maybe it's 30 days later, I send that letter of demand and register a default at 60 days. Keep it, keep it consistent, obviously. The squeaky wheel gets the grease. This is something our MD always talks about. Now, it sounds um, generic, but there's a reason it exists because it's true. If you are the one that's out there reminding, staying in contact with the customer, not necessarily hassling, just reminding them, um, keeping the you know communication open with them, asking them about the product and the services. Is everything okay? Yes, good. That means you should be paying your bills. So it makes it nice and easy. And something else, and I, and I tell my, uh, my team the same thing, don't be afraid of the phone. It's really easy to send an email because you don't have to talk to anyone. Uh, you don't have to worry about them you know, potentially rejecting you pick up the phone and call the person. By speaking to them, it puts them on the spot and you're going to be able to sort of get a feel for are they genuine, are they telling you the right thing, are they avoiding you? An email they can obviously just delete, you'll have no idea whether they've actually accessed it or not. So a phone call, you're going to get a lot more information out of it, so pick up the phone. Number seven, utilize technology. So. Zero and MYB I've pulled out. There's a number of other, you know, online um, accounting software packages out there, including, you know, Reckon, Reckon One. Um, they offer, many of them offer, a lot of them offer reminder notices that you can easily set up and they're simple templates that send an email saying this is now overdue or this is now due, et cetera, et cetera. Using those things mean you don't have to do it manually. It's going to save you time so you can get back to obviously selling your products and services and or you know getting on the phone to collect those ones that are potentially a little bit more overdue or they've been avoiding you. There's automated uh, collection products out there that specialize just in uh, the reminder notices and the process of you know going from invoicing through to reminders through to escalation to a lawyer or debt collection firm um, and then creditor watch obviously. So Creditor Watch provides a number of debt collection tools um, that are going to assist you with collecting, you know, hard to collect debts and easy to collect debts. So within Creditor Watch, click on the debt collection tools page when you're signed into your account and you'll see that there's a number of tools. So we've got a best practices guide, the membership logo to add to your invoices and statements. We've got two templates, so the reminder notice is a, is a nice gentle reminder when payment is due or slightly overdue, and then the final notice template, which is obviously explaining, hey, this is now overdue, you've got, for instance, seven days to pay. Uh, if not, we're gonna register a default and commence legal action. There's a video there about how to register a default and some default guidelines too. So all of you out there who are Credit Watch customers, obviously, please take advantage of those tools that are available as part of your credit or watch subscription account. Number eight, report bad debtors. Now, registering a default is an incredibly powerful tool. Um, we use it internally. Um, we've got other businesses that, that are you know, very close to us that we get feedback from around registering defaults. And, and, and more often than not, you get a response back from that debtor. Now, they may not be able to pay because they don't have the money, but at least they've made contact with you. You're able to put them on some sort of plan or come to some sort of agreement with them. Um, for those that can pay, again, they're going to get in contact with you more often than not because everyone knows that having a default on their credit file, on their credit report, is really going to affect them going forward because what happens is when you register that default 
an email alert goes out to all the other Creditor Watch customers that are monitoring that particular debtor, that particular business, and they're going to receive an email that says, a default has just been registered against this particular business for X number of dollars. So the first thing they're going to do is call that debtor and probably put them on stop or go, hey, what's going on here? We can no longer do business with you until that default is settled. So hopefully that debtor comes back to you and says, hey, I made a mistake. How can I rectify this? Let me pay you. Let me pay you, please. So don't be afraid to register defaults. Um, a couple of guidelines around that has to be over $150 and it needs to be 60 days overdue and their standard uh, industry guidelines. Um, so yeah, feel free to register defaults and or get in contact with us and we can talk you through that process as well. So down to number nine, get expert help, all right? So you've tried everything, you've used all of Creditor Watch's debt collection tools, you've utilized the technology that's out there, You've called, you've emailed, you've sent you know, reminder notices, etc., and they're either still refusing to pay, not answering your calls, or just um, you know, making promises that, that never obviously come through. So it's time to get a professional involved. Um, at this stage, we'd suggest contact a debt collector and or a lawyer, depending on obviously the size of the debt. They can obviously put a little bit more pressure. Having that third-party endorsement as well, um, can often assist with getting that, that debt paid. And obviously you need, or you want to have that expert advice when you take a legal um, statement of claim, you know, default judgment, potentially winding up an administration as well. But keep in mind that the longer a debt is outstanding, the harder it is going to be to collect. So don't wait 12 months to refer it to a debt collector. Um, realistically, you should be looking to do that within probably three to six months, depending on you know, the circumstances and, and the type of debtors that you're dealing with, the size of the amounts, et cetera. Um, again, feel free to contact us. Um, if you've got any questions around that, we obviously can't give you legal advice. However, we can give you some general advice um, and we can put you in touch with, um, with those professionals, with those experts as well. And the last one, really simple, repeat. Repeat it over and over. This is the sort of thing that should just become almost monotonous. Um, muscle memory kicks in, you know exactly what you're doing with every single invoice, every single customer, every single day of the month when you're collecting debts, okay? So that pretty much wraps it up uh, for the webinar. I know that there are a number of questions coming in and the team are answering them as we go, which is fantastic. I've probably gone right on time. I generally try to keep it to half an hour so those who are signed in have got time to go grab something to eat if they're doing it in their lunch break. Um, thanks again for your time. Really appreciate you signing in. Just a few things to run through. Obviously, if you're not a Creditor Watch customer, feel free to click on that link and sign up to a free trial. You can go to the website or contact us as well. Um, we do have some upcoming webinars, so please keep an eye on this on this website, uh, sorry, this web page itself. The next webinar will be looking at market insights from our Q2 small business risk review. So please um, sign up to that if you do want to find out what's going on in the industry and around Australia. And if you've got any questions, please contact us. Um, you can email us at admin at creditorwatch.com.au, contact us there, 02 um, We've also got LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter as well if you want to see any more information. Um, and something else, if, you, if you're not a subscriber yet, jump on our blog um, to have a look at you know, the latest articles that we have there. You can subscribe to our newsletter. We're always sending things out on a regular basis to keep you up to date. I will leave you all here. Um, I'll leave this page open so you've got those links in front of you should, you should you require them. And I'll leave open the ability to ask questions as well. So feel free to um, ask questions as we go. Thank you very much again for attending and I uh, hope to see you again soon.